Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Gigabyte GA-Z87X UD3H LJ1150 motherboard featuring the new Z87 chipset. The box, a fairly basic one. Again, we're looking at the Gigabyte Z87X UD3H motherboard and as the model name already tells us, the new Z87 flagship chipset model from Intel is used. This board only supports the 4th generation of Intel core processors since a new socket is used, the LJ1150 socket. This board also uses Gigabyte's new ultra durable 5 plus quality standard. This means there are really good components and technologies present such as the 2x copper PCB design. Here's some marketing. Ultra cool with an all new heatsink design. Ultra performance with all IR digital CPU power design. Ultra safe with the Gigabyte UEFI dual bias feature and Ultra USB 3 Plus with 10 USB 3.0 ports. On the back of the box is lots of information on the board layout and all the connectors and ports. But let's open this box up and see what's inside. Right on top is nothing, yes, nothing. But in this white package is the motherboard itself, well protected in an antiseptic bag. But we'll get to it a little bit later. First, we'll take a look at the included accessories. Of course there's the motherboard user's manual with lots of information in it. Inside also is a driver CD, but I'd really recommend downloading the latest drivers from Gigabyte's website. And if you plan using the integrated graphics of your processor, I'd recommend downloading the Intel HD graphics drivers from Intel's website and not Gigabyte's. Simply because Intel will update their graphics driver download page more often than Gigabyte will for the iGPU. Between the pages of the manual there is also the standard blue Gigabyte sticker. Then here are some more guidebooks but in different languages. Here's the nice black and color coordinated I.O. shield and on the other side you can see it's very well protected against static interference. And I really like seeing such an I.O. shield with a motherboard at this price point. You don't get to see that very often, mainly on high-end boards only. Gigabyte also kindly includes a black NVIDIA SLI bridge so you can run a two-way SLI configuration. Last but not least, four black SATA 6 gigabit per second cables. Now let's get back to the white packaging. In there is the motherboard itself in an anti-static bag. I'll quickly take it out so we can take a closer look at the board. There we go, here it is with some protection form right there, which I'll quickly remove. Here it is now, the motherboard in all of its glory. Right away I have to admit it looks fantastic. It comes with a matte black PCB and Gigabyte has put some really sharp looking heatsinks onto the board. The layout on the first side seems to be very good. Now let's fly over the whole motherboard so you can get a good impression of it. This is more of a mid-range board and not high-end. However, the aesthetics are really sharp and I like that a lot. A matte black PCB always makes PC components look better. But what I really like here is the PCB is matte, in this case black, which is the best color in my opinion and the heat sinks are partly shiny. This makes a very elegant and clean impression. But that's also depending on the heatsink design actually. Black, grey and blue make a really good color combination here. But again, aesthetics are always a thing of taste. Some like it a lot and some don't. I personally am that type of an enthusiast that also cares about the looks of the components, not just the performance and features. To be honest, feature wise on the first sight, you could really think that's a cheaper high end motherboard. Now let's get into detail. The new LJ1150 socket is used. This means you can only install 4th generation Intel core processors into this socket. That are the new Intel Haswell CPUs. Please don't try installing CPUs that don't use the LJ1150 socket. As for the memory, there are 4 DIMM slots that support the dual channel technology. 
the maximum amount of memory you can install on this board are 32 gigabytes. The supported frequencies go all the way up from 1333 to 3000 at OC of course. SATA ports, here they are. You get a total of 8. But with the help of the new Z87 chipset, all of these 8 ports use the SATA 6 gigabit per second interface. However, not all of the ports actually run off the Z87 chipset. These 6 black ones run off the Intel Z87 chipset. The two grey ones, however, run off the third party Marvel 88SE 9172 chip. Right next to the SATA ports also is a PCIe auxiliary power connection in form of a SATA power connector. Gigabyte recommends connecting the SATA power cable from your power supply to this auxiliary power connection when having multiple graphics cards installed to ensure system stability. But let's get to the expansion slots. You get a total of 3 PCI Express X16 slots. This one, the first, is a PCIe 3.0 slot that runs at X16. The second one also is a PCIe 3.0 slot, but this one runs at X8. And the third one is a PCIe 2.0 slot that runs at X4. When running a single GPU configuration, use the first slot in order to get the best performance. This board supports two-way AMD Crossfire as well as two-way NVIDIA SLI configurations. Install your graphics cards into the first two PCIe 3.0 x16 slots when running such configurations. Then there also are three PCIe 2.0 x1 slots for expansion cards such as sound or network cards for example. Last but not least, a single legacy PCI slot. Next up, the fan headers and their places. Up here is the CPU fan header as well as a CPU optional fan header in the right spot in between the heatsink and the dim slots. Right beside the 24 pin power connection is the system fan 4 header. In the lower right hand corner of the board, after the SATA ports, is the system fan 3 header. In between the front panel audio and TPM headers or also below the last PCIe slot is the System Fan 2 header. Last but not least, the System Fan 1 header in between the heatsink and the first PCIe X1 slot. So you definitely get a good amount of fan headers on this board. But let's stick with the headers for a while now. Let's take a look at the row full of headers down here. Here are the color coordinated and well labeled front panel headers. This will make connecting the cables a lot easier for beginners but also a lot faster for enthusiasts. Next to the front panel headers is a header with a plastic cap. Let me remove it real quick. This is an USB 3.0 header. Next up there are three USB 2.0 headers. This is the COM header or also known as serial port. Then TPM, the Trusted Platform Module header. Lastly, the front panel HD audio header on the far left. But there's one more header in a different place. This is another USB 3.0 header, but this one also supports the Gigabyte on off charge 2 function when the system is in the S4 or S5 mode. In the top right hand corner, right beside the dim slots is a big red onboard power button. The small blue one is the onboard reset button. Right next to it is a small black button, that would be the clear CMOS button. Then there also are two little switches. This one will allow you to choose whether to boot from the main BIOS chip or the backup BIOS chip. The second switch allows you to enable or disable the dual BIOS function. I personally really like these buttons and switches. These give you a little more control over the motherboard and how it behaves in certain situations. Something I also like is that the buttons and switches are not spread all around the board but are located in the same spot. In between the 24 pin power connection and the dim slots also is a debug LED just like on the higher end boards. The LED will light up red and the debug LED codes can be found in the manual so you know what these codes actually stand for. Oh and near the onboard buttons and switches are some voltage measurement points for the CPU, memory and so on. So you can easily monitor the voltages with a multimeter. 
I always like seeing these kind of features, especially on motherboards at the lower price point, because in most cases you only get to see something like that on the more expensive boards. The 24 pin power connection is right here in its ideal location, as well as the 8 pin ATX 12 volt power connection up there. This Z87X UD3H motherboard has an 8 phase power design to ensure good power delivery and stability of the CPU, especially when overclocking. When comparing just 8 phases with the last generation of motherboards that were meant for Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge processors, 8 phases may seem not that good. But since the new Intel Haswell CPUs have integrated VRMs, you no longer are that dependent on the motherboard power delivery system, so the amount of phases. From the phases to the capacitors, high quality components are used all over the board, which should overall offer better stability but mainly last a lot longer. The VRMs are cooled down very well with these two very good looking big heatsinks. This should definitely help with overclocking. The Intel Z87 chipset is cooled down by a separate heatsink. I really like the way the heatsinks look. The design is eye-catching, but still, everything seems to match very nicely. In between the two PCIe 3.0 x16 slots are the two physical BIOS chips, the main BIOS and the backup BIOS chip. Just in case something goes wrong with the main one, the backup BIOS will reflash a functional BIOS back to the main chip and your system should then be up and running again with a fully functional main BIOS chip. This feature is called dual BIOS. An orange LED light will indicate which BIOS chip is currently being used when the system is running. The Realtek ALC898 codec will take care of the onboard HD audio. Both audio playback and recording isn't bad at all with this chip, however recording doesn't always work that well, simply because a silent buzzing noise can be heard in the background, however the recording quality got a lot better with this ALC898 audio codec compared to the previous versions, but this is also depending on your equipment. Now let's move on to the back panel. There's the PS2 combo port and two USB 3.0 ports. Here's a VGA out, a DVI out, HDMI out, as well as a DisplayPort output. There's also an optical SPDIF output. Two USB 3.0 ports, two eSATA 6 gigabit per second ports, a gigabit LAN port, and two more USB 3.0 ports. Last but not least, the 7.1 audio jacks. So there are lots and lots of ports and outputs on the back panel, and that's excellent at this price point. Thanks to the Intel Z87 chipset, you now have lots and lots of USB 3.0 ports. There's not a single USB 2.0 port on the back panel, but don't worry, the USB 3.0 ports are USB 2.0 and 1.1 backwards compatible. The last part of this review would be the BIOS. Of course, Gigabyte also uses the new UEFI BIOS. And as you can see, Gigabyte updated their UEFI BIOS design. It looks fantastic now. Right now, at the time of this video, Gigabyte, in my opinion, now has the crown for the best looking BIOS so far. A lot of people definitely don't care on how the BIOS looks, but to me, it's important. This new UEFI dual bias will adjust the monitor screen resolution I believe, because I have a 1080p monitor here and the bias looks crisp clear. It doesn't look old anymore. There are lots of customization options here in this bias. You can customize your own home tab here with the most important options. On the left is the CPU status with the core ratio, voltage, temperature and so on. And below is the memory status with the DRAM frequency and channel timings. On the right is the system status with the host clock, system voltages and fan speeds. On the top are some more monitoring displays. And on the bottom you can clearly see the motherboard model name, BIOS version, the installed CPU and so on. If you want to, you could also change the background of the BIOS to one of Gigabyte's presets or use your own custom background. I didn't try that out though, because I'm happy with this nice blue one. 
just in case you experience errors with the new UEFI design or you prefer to work with the classic UEFI bias, you could of course also switch back and forth between the classic and the modern UEFI design. The bias is very responsive and offers lots and lots of options and possibilities. I really like the flexibility with this UEFI bias. Overclocking was very easy by the way. Although the new Intel Haswell CPUs don't overclock that well due to the very high temperatures, from the motherboard side you could overclock the i7 4770K for example fairly high. Everything was very stable. It's just that the CPU gets too hot, but that's not the board's fault. The Gigabyte GA Z87X UD3H is a great choice for the price. You get a lot more than what you actually pay for. Great performance is offered, overclocking works very well, the CPU, the memory, just everything runs perfectly stable with this motherboard. It's truly amazing to see so many features on a board at such price point. You pay for mid-range and you get features as you would on higher end boards. Features like that are the onboard buttons and switches, the debug LED, the voltage measurement points, great good looking heatsinks and the huge amount of ports and outputs on the back panel. With the help of the Intel Z87 chipset you have lots and lots of USB 3.0 ports. The UEFI BIOS looks and works fantastic and for those of you that prefer the classic UEFI BIOS design from Gigabyte you can also use that one. The design, the aesthetics are amazing in my opinion. Of course, that's always a thing of taste and if someone actually cares for the looks. Lots of enthusiasts do, and so do I. So long story short, this is a very solid motherboard with tons of features, a great overall design for a very affordable price. It has only 8 phases, but because the new Intel Haswell CPUs have built in VRMs, you are no longer that dependent on the power delivery system of the motherboard. So even with 8 phases you will get really far when it comes to overclocking. Before you ever hit the limit of overclocking with the 8 phases, the new Intel Haswell CPUs will first melt. Well, not really melt, but you get my point. For extreme overclockers, however, that decide to cool their CPU down with liquid nitrogen, for example, the 8 phases will not be enough for these extreme high clock speeds. Pros are excellent price performance ratio, great performance, good layout, excellent design. This motherboard also comes with tons of features such as onboard buttons and switches, a debug LED, voltage measurement points and so on. I have absolutely nothing to complain here and therefore the Gigabyte GA Z87X UD3H motherboard really deserves a 10 out of 10 and I would definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.